Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Alpha Obeisance channel. So in the last episode, we left you with a fresh Arch Linux install with a fresh Hyperland uh, desktop experience, if you will. Um, and so in this video, we're going to go ahead and dive straight back into it. You should be looking at your fresh Hyperland installation here. And what I'm going to do is teach you guys how to configure this in a much more modular and user-friendly way. I'm going to do my best to set you up for the next videos in this guide for a noob's guide to Hyperland uh, so that you'll understand how it's structured, why it works the way it does, and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do is take a peek at the top portion here. You can see a warning that says you're using an auto-generated config, and then it gives you the config path. It then tells you that if you press super, in this case by default it's Windows plus Q, it will open Q kitty which is the terminal uh, last but not least it shows you super plus m will actually exit hyperland and return you back to your login manager but we have no use for that so we're going to press windows and q to open up kitty now this is where i'm going to deviate a little bit from what you might typically see in a hyperland tutorial where everyone wants to be the cool kid you're the linux user that's obsessed with your fucking terminal and you know yeah we could do that we could do vim if we were absolute glutton for punishments we could do our path to directory so dot config hyper hyperland.conf we could do it that way if we're not entirely gluttons for punishment we could go nano and do the same thing config hyper hyperland.conf and edit in nano and this is a you know just a lot more modern and more intuitive in my opinion but even this is just ridiculous why why in the hell would i edit my whole fucking configuration in this like why no we're going to make it easier for you new users out there and we're going to do something that i ha i don't think i've actually seen done really in a hyperland guide so what we're going to do is sudo um, Pacman dash capital S Z. This is the Z text editor. It's what replaced VS code for me. I'm going to go ahead and press enter and type in my super awesome password. It's going to ask me to install a uh, Z editor. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. It'll install that. And now what you can do is you can go Z editor. Uh, this does not work on the uh, virtual machine and I don't care to fix it right now. So just do what I'm doing here and I promise you're going you're gonna to be able to follow along. So you got Zeditor and then you're going to type dot config and press enter and that will open your configuration file in the Z text editor. So now you should be looking at this exact same screen. I'm just going to abandon the virtual machine because I, I just don't care to debug and figure out why Zeditor won't open on the uh, configuration here so we're on the virtual machine so here we are we're all staring at our Z text editor now we can we can work comfortably how about that I'll, I'll just leave it at that we're gonna work comfortably so in this directory underneath dot config we've got hyper which houses our hyperland dot conf file this is our master configuration isn't it gorgeous it's a mile long it's got everything you could ever imagine you'd want for the uh, fundamental foundation building your own Hyperland desktop experience. Unfortunately, if you're a new user, you're going to look at this and be like, damn, bro, like that's that's nuts. There's so much shit here and I don't understand any of it. So you're immediately going to be just turned off. You're not going to want to mess with this. Why would you? I can't blame you. So what we're going to do is go ahead and right click on Hyper and create new folder. We're going to call it config. Next, we're going to take note of this good little blessing from the developers that says source equals home directory. If you type title key and forward slash, that basically means the same thing as dollar sign home, which I'm actually going to replace here because I'm anal like that. And so now we've got source equals home forward slash, make sure we got that, dot config hyper mycolors.conf as an example. We're going to select it copy and paste and we're going to name this one what oh you guessed it monitors that's our first one so we're going to type monitors.conf now when you click uh, control s to save if you go back it's going to see a little red error and you're going to say what no i don't like red errors i don't like warning so that's a bit of an issue and it's basically telling you hey dumbass there is no file there so guess what we should probably can uh, create our monitors.conf so we right click our new configuration directory and click no new file monitors.conf and press enter control s to save just to make sure everything's kosher when you go back it should go away but unfortunately i've made so many damn typos lately that this is a little bit ridiculous so let's see here Mo oh that's why i did this the same the last take i did the same thing so i forgot to include config 
forward slash. So now when I control S, don't forget to add this if you're following along, you want home.config hyper config and then your monitor's configuration. So now when you save, voila, everything's good. The only thing you see is that annoying little message. How about we get rid of that? We jump back to our configuration and if you go to the top, you'll see auto generated equals one. Hashtag that to yeet us to lead us, control S to save, and voila, your warning is gone. Now we're really going to start cooking because now we've got the fundamentals to really modularize our configuration. So we're going to go ahead and copy that. We're going to paste it one more time. And uh, we're going to select the monitor section now that that's all created before I get ahead of myself. We're going to control X to cut. We're going to go back to monitors, control V to paste, control S to save, back to the hyperland. Congratulations. You are now sourcing your uh, monitors configuration. So you're good to go. Now that we've got a duplicate of monitors.conf, we should probably fix that because this is called my programs. I don't like that. We're going to call that auto start. No, we're not. We're going to call it. I'm getting ahead of myself again. We're going to call this variables. How about that? That makes a lot more sense because we're going to add all kinds of things to this. So we're going to name the new link here variables. But guess what? If I save that, we're going to have another error. Well, we don't like those errors. So let's go ahead and create this new configuration in the config directory variables.conf and once we add that we can safely go back here select our variables section control x to cut control v to paste control s to save and congratulations you are good to go the warning is gone it says i'm happy now so we're going to go ahead and copy this we're going to make another one we're going to call this one auto start actually no, don't use capitals don't do that auto start now if i control s well guess what we got us another red warning don't panic we just need to right click configuration new file auto start dot conf now when we press enter it'll create the file control s to save and voila your warning's gone Go ahead and select auto start all of that up to variables or excuse me environment we're going to go ahead and control v to paste control s to save we have conf configured the auto start to go. I'm sorry, I've done this video a thousand times and I'm trying to get it done in one take. So we're going to go ahead and create another link here. We're going to call this one environment and control S to save. Ignore the warning. Right click on config new file environment.conf control S to save or press enter to create the file. Control S to save and now your warning should be gone unless you're a dumbass and typed it wrong like I did. So in which case we're going to go back here <laughs> take a look at our link. We're going to call it environment and we're going to save that and then we're going to make sure that we type this right. I'm going to rename it environment sorry guys this is just a little bit of real-time debugging for you guys to show you that it happens to the best of us especially if you're in a hurry uh, typos happen all the time and it will absolutely mess your configuration up so once i made sure that my names matched and they were typed properly obviously the warning went away so now we can proceed select the entire uh, environment variables directory or excuse me uh, block go ahead and control V to paste control s to save and we can jump back here and create a new link We're going to do this one. And we're going to call it aesthetics Control s to save right click new file aesthetics dot conf control uh, Actually with this one you just press enter and it'll create the file control s to save and we should be free of errors unless again once again we call it aesthetics s -s -s Aesthetics. <laughs> Make sure that you name this shit right. As the slow down, dude. Aesthetic. Okay, control S to save and you should be good to go. The error is gone. So th uh, this is when you need to drink water, you need to sleep, you need to get some food in your belly, and you need to fucking exercise. Otherwise, you're going to end up like me and you're going to spend so much time just trying to stay alive. <laughs> Next, we're going to go ahead and select everything under look and feel. Scroll down to input just before input control X to cut aesthetics control V to paste control S to save we should still be without error which we are so we're good to go and in the top of the aesthetics because I'm super anal and OCD we're going to change this to aesthetics there you go go ahead and space that out now don't that look pretty except that's off center who gives a shit we're going to try and stay focused next we've got input rules we're going to copy and paste another link we're going to rename aesthetics to input rules input dash rules particularly and then we're going to right click config new file input rules.conf we're going to press enter to save that control s to save our hyperland conf 
And then we're going to go ahead and cut the input and paste it into here. Control S to save and you're good to go. Next, we're going to create another source and we're going to call this one keybindings.conf. We're going to go ahead and right click config new file keybindings.conf. Going to go ahead and press enter. That will save that. And then we will select all of key bindings and scroll down to uh, Windows and Workspaces, Control X to cut, Control V to paste, Control S to save, back to Hyperland, and we have one last to go. We're gonna copy and paste. We're gonna call this one, we're just gonna call this one Window-Rules, because even though they've got it listed and titled as Windows and Workspaces, they don't have any examples in here that are actually Workspace specific. So these are literally just all Window Rules. So we're just gonna throw it into Window rules. Can create a new file, window rules.conf. Press enter, control V to paste, control S to save. As long as you're sourced, you're good to go. Let's check our configuration. Everything checks out, no warnings. So, congratulations, guys. You just created a completely modular Hyperland configuration system that's really easy for new users or just convenient for power users to look at a single directory and say, oh, I want to change aesthetics. I want to change auto start. I want to change the environment or input rules. I want to change key bindings. And you just know right where it's at. There is no going to a master file, control F, and then sifting through a bunch of shit to find what you're looking for. No, this will work real nice, I promise you. If you followed along and you like what you saw, I appreciate it if you hit that like button. Any questions, comments, or concerns, or corrections, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, if you like what you see, consider smacking that subscribe button. It helps me out. And if you like to know when new videos drop, I try to keep them consistent. Uh, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in, guys.